have a new, um, very purple person today, which is great because we need a little color at this moment in the day because this is kind of going to be, we're getting down towards the end. We have our last two speakers are in the room, so to speak. And Allison is going to be talking about, she's, uh, Allison is a part of my um, uh, GSOW, the Girl of Skepticism on Wikipedia project. She's going to be explaining that to you. I'm so excited that she was able to make it today because we were kind of iffy that she thought she was going to have to be, she was going to be away. And um, she gave this talk at Skeptic Camp, uh, Skeptic Hal. So she's going to um, kind of go over it again and talk about it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, Allison's got is updated for us. So Allison, you're on. It's all you, all you, all, all. All the Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. And I can see your slides. All right. Um, thank you so much. I This has been awesome today. I've caught a lot of the talks and they're really, really so interesting and diverse. And Craig, that was fascinating. Thank you so much. Um, I, mine's yet again different from the previous ones. Um, I'm taking a little bit more of an angle on like politics um, and stuff like that. Um, so my name is Allison Long. I live in Western Maine. That's approximately where I am in a little teeny tiny town. Um, I used to be a high school English teacher and that doesn't seem super relevant to this group, but um, I taught research as a big chunk of what I did with my students. And my big emphasis was sources, the credibility, currency, and accuracy of your sources. Um, and they were so tired of hearing me talk about that all the time. Um, but it really has informed my interest in, in doing this work also. Um, in 2015, I left teaching to be a stay-at-home mom and most of my socialization came on the computer. So um, I was actually kind of active in a, like a statewide um, mom's group, which as you can imagine was full of claims of pseudoscience and all kinds of things. And I was recruited out of that um, because of my strong advocacy for vaccines and science and listening to your doctor um, to help on a referendum campaign, which I'll get into in more details. So that's sort of how I got into pro-vaccine activism um, and then which eventually led me to GSOW. So <clears throat> that's kind of an overview. So <clears throat> in spring of 2019, um, the Maine legislature passed a new law that eliminated religious and philosophical exemptions. This headline is a little bit misleading. It um, pertain to, to school, excuse me, like child, children's vaccination requirements for, for attending school. Um, and our law actually rewrote it to pertain to all schools, anybody, private, public, um, colleges and universities, any vaccination requirements for any of those things. Um, so, and this is the, this is the law as it, as it is now, it, it talks about school specifically. Um, so within the 90 day window that they had um, after the law was passed, and I was not involved with getting the law through initially, which as you probably have seen around the country is quite a feat. Um, so the anti-vaxxers were livid and they collected over 79,000 signatures. In Maine, you can do a people's referendum that way. I know different states are different, um, but they did everything you know, by the book and by October, um, which was the deadline, according to the law, they had collected enough and um, question one was born. And according to the law, it had to be on the next statewide election ballot, which was March of 2020. Um, and that coincided with the presidential primary um, just that became an issue later. So, um, so we were off and running and I joined right about then. Um, I did a couple different things, um, on the campaign. So Maine Families for Vaccines is the group that I worked with. It's a political action committee that ran the no on one 
campaign statewide. Um, it's a great organization. Um, they're, they're just really, really great. Um, so the first thing I did was I was on the social media, we called it the rapid response team. Um, and we tried to keep an eye on comment sections, mostly on Facebook, which as you can imagine, it was a giant undertaking. Um, and we sort of tried to manipulate the algorithms, get our comments high up, um, boost each other's comments with conversation and things like that. Um, always sourcing, you know, always making sure that we were hitting the talking points. Um, the other thing that I did was I helped coordinate um, the statewide letters to the editor campaign, portion of the campaign. Um, I helped people edit and come up with ideas. Um, and I kind of kept an eye on what got published and we had a big spreadsheet where we kept track of all that stuff. Um, and then lawn signs, everyone was on the lawn sign team. Um, I collected and distributed and also drilled some into the ground and it was March in Maine. So we had long um, drill bits that we drilled through the ice and snow to get them in the ground. Um, our victory was overwhelming. Um, 74% of the voters rejected the veto, so wanted to keep the law eliminating the exemptions. It was very confusing, and that was a big push that we made was to help people understand why it was no and all of this stuff. Um, so it was a pretty awesome victory party, and it was pretty much everyone's last social event for <laughs> going on two years now. <laughs> it was like the weekend before everything shut down. Um, and we became only the fourth state to eliminate religious and philosophical exemptions for kids' vaccine requirements. Um, there are six states now, and you're welcome to hazard some guesses as to what they are in, in the chat if you want to. Um, I can tell you during Q and A if, if you want which ones they are. So how did I get to this group all the way from Nowhereville, Western Maine? Um, during the campaign, a lot of us joined some national Facebook groups dedicated to um, pushing back on vaccine misinformation. And so I was in Cicada and um, a bunch of us were. And Cicada is the Community Immunity Champions and Defenders Association. Um, and they kind of just pay attention around Facebook to like people who are getting harassed or misinformation stuff. And this post showed up in there um, which says that they're that the guerrilla skeptics are looking for volunteers to edit Wikipedia pages of anti-vax groups and personalities. And I was like, okay. Um, so right there, I, I thought it was a, or a pro vaccine effort. Um, had no idea that there was so much else going on and I've learned so much um, since then. But I emailed Susan, I was like, the post was in Cicada. And she was like, what's Cicada? And it was kind of funny, <laughs> but. Um, so I reached out to Susan, um, and she just got me right in immediately and we got to work. So I'll pause here. If you are, um, thinking about joining us or have more questions about joining us, um, this is one way to get a hold of, or two ways to get a hold of the team. And I'll have this again at the end of my little talk. Um, so these were and are the draws of this team for me. And hopefully if you're listening and wondering, um, they might be draws for you as well. Um, the first one is something that Susan emphasizes a lot, which is that we're not like manipulating anything. We're not going around anything like Wikipedia's policies favor science and scientific evidence. So it's not a stretch to do this activism work on Wikipedia, which is really cool. Um, probably the biggest convincer for me, having just spent four months arguing in comment sections, was the reach of Wikipedia is so much greater than you're gonna reach in you know, a local news comment section. Um, the six, or it was at the time, the sixth most visited website in the world, um, and so, for example, this is my stat right now, as of today, the pages that I've edited for this project has over 462,000 page views. And like, 
we say, you know, not everybody's going to be digesting everything on the page when they click, but um, still, that's way more than I was getting um, arguing with the same 10 anti vaxxers over here in my little corner of the US. So, um, one example of one of my pages that has really been crazy was Dave Ramsey. Um, he, I don't know if you guys know who he is, it's not really worth knowing who he is, but. Um, Susan threw out that he was in the news and I knew who he was, so I snapped up the page and um, it's had 384,000 page views since I edited it just about a year ago, it looks like. Um, he gets, I mean, huge spikes whenever he's back in the news, but um, big COVID denier, big like, I don't know why we're wearing masks kind of, kind of guy. He's really charming. Um, so that was a big one. Um, in the fall, I don't remember what day it was, it was before the last time I did, or after the last time I did this presentation, um, the team reached hundred million views on Wikipedia, which is just so cool and so crazy. And I'm so humbled to have been a part of that number, even for just a year. Um, another draw of the project is just how many different ways you can contribute. Like I love to rewrite pages, but I don't always have time or like focus enough to tackle that. So if I find a good source for something that I follow, I'll stick it, I'll go make sure it's in the page. That's what we call a backwards edit. Um, I just keep an eye on my watch list, see if anybody has vandalized the Christian Northrop page lately, more on that in a little bit. Um, and then there's a whole section of people that do translation, which is so important um, and so cool because I don't even really speak that good English. Um, so there's so much, there's so many different ways that you can contribute on this team. Um, the training as a teacher, I so appreciate also. Um, this little comment from our training spreadsheet really kind of encapsulates what the training, the attitude of the training, like she's, Susan's just like, I'll kick you in the butt or whatever you need, I'll answer your question and I'll, and I, I asked a thousand million questions and she was so patient with me and, um, it was just a light, fun learning experience. Um, Wikipedia doesn't offer anything like this training. Um, I can't imagine trying to learn how to edit Wikipedia without this training. Um, everything that they offer on the site is just complicated and specific. And um, this training has really, as Susan explained to me, um, been refined by teachers and educators who've been on the team, like giving her feedback and, and making the training better. So um, it's really, really excellent. Um, and then obviously the cabal of the team, um, I love being, making friends around the world and um, talking to people from other parts of the world because I'm in such a rural part of, of the world. Um, and it's just, they're so supportive. Um, any question that you have, big or small, um, nobody's like, nobody pretends to know everything. Like everyone, everyone has questions. Everyone learns from each other. Um, it's a great, great supportive group of people um, to be part of. And it's cool. Um, sometimes I'll see something in the news and I'll say, oh, I hope their Wikipedia page is, you know, up to snuff and I don't have time to look at it. So I'll post it to the team and somebody will be like, oh yeah, I can do that. Or I'll check that out. Um, and it's truly a team effort. Um, so some things that the team is not, um, it's definitely not lonely as I um, explained just a little bit ago. Um, it's also not something that requires prior knowledge. So I had never even clicked off of the regular article page on Wikipedia before. Um, so you, you'll get everything in training in a very logical way that builds on itself. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, and then it does take a little while to kind of get your groove and know what your projects are gonna be. Um, so it's not something overnight, but um, it's definitely self-paced, which is excellent. Um, all right, so here's a little bit of what I've done. Um, in the last year, I'm right about at my year anniversary, a little past it, um, of getting on this team. So my interests are local politicians, um, pro and anti-science, um, pro-science 
candidates. So kind of building up people who are maybe going to replace the anti-vaxxers in the state legislature. Um, and then we have a global anti-vax figure um, right here in Maine, and I will talk about her a little bit more, but um, I keep an eye on those pages. I also do a lot of racial justice work. So I like to write about black scientists and activists, and then I've done a couple of pages for um, racial justice organizations and movements. Um, here's a couple of the pages I've done. Um, hey, Quarantine is a um, COVID-19 South Korean strategy, it's really interesting. Um, Linda Mead Tolan is a black scientist. Um, Stacey Brenner is a local Senator in Maine who's very pro-science. And then Dave Thomas, um, I think was a member of this group or knows people in this group. Um, and I, re I rewrote his page also. Um, this is one thing that I try to do. I will, um, if I see a meme on an anti-vax, in an anti-vax area, um, I kind of check it out and make sure that there's the right information. So I saw this meme about Julie Gerberding and um, I went and rewrote her page. She's so fascinating. She's had so many different experiences, amazing scientist. Um, and she's had quite a few page views since I um, did that. So that, that was really interesting. Um, all right, so Adrian, I'm gonna talk about you a little bit here. Um, <laughs> so. This is Christian Northrup. I don't know if anybody else um, has the pleasure, but she is one of the so-called disinformation dozen. She disseminates repulsive amounts of anti-vaccine information, all, among other things, all over the world. She has a huge following. Um, and I was kind of keeping an eye, she didn't have a page and um, we kind of got around, there was enough coverage and Adrian said, all right, I'll tackle this page. And one of my proudest moments um, in my work so far was when Christian Northrup herself, in one of her nightly um, Great Awakening video addresses to all of her like minions, um, she was really irritated that she had a Wikipedia page with all these lies on it. Um, and I was like, this is pinnacle, this is great. Um, one of my favorite things to do is make her life miserable, which it's probably terrible, but, um, and I'll tell a quick story about that. I think I have time. Um, so in April of 2020, now pause for a minute and think about what the world was going through in April of 2020. Um, Maine Women's Magazine put her on the cover of their April issue. And it was a fluff interview totally nothing about her insane anti-vaccine, anti-COVID as a hoax um, ideas. So my campaign friends and I, who keep a close eye on her, she was very involved with the um, referendum campaign and wanting to eliminate the new law. Um, we got a hold of all the advertisers for Maine Women's Magazine and let them know about what her deal was. And Coffee by Design, which is an awesome coffee company in Portland, um, Portland, Maine, um, they pulled all their ads and they made a public statement as to why they pulled all their ads. And um, it created this big kerfuffle and the editor came after us and it was, it was pretty awesome. Um, they didn't take back the issue or apologize or anything like that, but um, she definitely, I mean, she knew it was happening and it irritated her. So that was another little point. Um, anyway. So may, um, GSOW has 106, as of today, vac vaccine pages tagged um, as having to do with vaccination. Um, and the page views as of today are over almost 5 million, which is super awesome. Um, yeah, so that's my little corner of GSOW. Um, I love doing the vaccine stuff. I do some other stuff too. But um, if you're interested, please reach out. Susan likes Facebook Messenger. Um, and that's a little glimpse of what her profile looks like right now. So if you need to find her. Um, but then there's the email um, and our team website also. So thank you very much for listening and being interested in the team and come join us. That was great. Oh, that was so fun. I forgot about the picture with the cracker on the head. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
That makes me laugh so much when I see that. I think, oh my gosh, I have, there's a picture of me with a cracker on my head. <laughs> that was so fun. I, I, I really enjoy, I really enjoyed the, your talk. I'm so glad that you, you were able to do it again with updated numbers. What a difference. Oh my yeah. God. I was looking I at that going, wow, look at how, how much different. We're over a hundred, I think we're at 105 million page views now. So we've had 5 million page views since he wrote this in um, awesome. wow. September, something like that. Oh, I can't remember. October, when. October. Yeah. October? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So we only have a couple questions that I think that are here. So uh, let's see. The first one is from Jim. He says, I'm a Wikipedia editor too, addicted for more than 10 years, and I haven't touched an anti-vax or a vax page yet. So what do you want to say about that? I'm a little scared still of the big ones. I don't do a lot of edits or I don't do a lot of rewrites on the big ones. Um, I've kind of just done a lot of snooping around locally and I don't, I'm not sure where this person's from, but I'm sure they have both pro and anti-science people looking at state offices, local offices, um, and start there. It's less intimidating. Um, you won't get a lot of like edit warring. So yeah. We don't have a lot of pushback on the anti-vax pages, except from fans of the anti-vaxxers and they, they leave such obvious, I mean, it's so obvious when they put stuff in, like we'll say, you know, that they're an anti-vaxxer. We say it in, we do it correctly is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And they'll go in and they'll try to take it all out. And it's like, okay, mm -hmm. well, let me just revert that. That was 10 seconds of work. You know, it's not like they're doing anything major to the article. I don't think they really understand the rules. I don't think they really get it. No, no, most people don't know. Yeah. So it's not so much pushback on the anti-vax pages. And a lot of the anti-vax pages, like for Robert Kennedy Jr., and things like oh, that have yeah. already been written to some extent. And so there's mm -hmm. not that much to do. So we've just been working on the up and coming, but now they're very famous, like Dell Big Tree and um, yeah. Christian Northrup or Simone yeah. Gold. Yeah. Man, yeah, just awful. So our next question is for you is, oh gosh, I have to scroll up. Here it is. From Eric, uh, he says, if who, if anyone checks individual girl skepticism work edits, in other words, who watches the watchers? Uh, like, the, who's watching? I guess. Guess. Well, I mean, the rest of Wikipedia, you know, anybody can stick. Um, <laughs> anybody can stick any page on their watch list. So I usually go in once a day, once every other day, and just see like what kind of action's been happening on the pages that I watch. Um, but Susan's not in there like checking our, you know, checking out everything we do by any stretch. Um, it's a very, Wikipedia yeah. is a very like, it's cool how it all shakes out and, um, you know, at, vandalism doesn't last long, and um, there's a lot more people on there that are dedicated to like the rules and policies than people that aren't. So, and there are editors uh, who are pro science who are often, if not uh, fanatically, trying to find trip us up to find some find us doing something wrong, and they make a big mm -hmm. case out of you know something that's just slightly wrong or whatever, slightly worded weird or I don't know whatever <laughs> and they just go they just will go all over us but anyway um what is the top GSOW vaccine page do you know you were just looking at the vaccine I'm not off the top of my head that's a great question how do they I guess I could look really quick hopefully um I'll sing a song I'm a little teapot short and I can look at the question later I'm looking now as it's loading and it's there and we have 106 pages. Yeah, you're absolutely up to date on that. That's perfect. 105 million. Okay, for um, in total. So the top of all the Wikipedia pages we've written. Oh, this is great. Of all the Wikipedia pages that we have written that are vaccine related, the number one viewed is at 441,000 is the 1976 swine flu outbreak. And that's because we wrote that page a long time ago. Cool. But I learned a lot about that. That was really interesting about should they give the flu vaccine to people not knowing if we were going to end up having an outbreak? Because that could have been a that could have been a pandemic, but it yeah, it wasn't as bad as everyone thought it would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
huge amounts of money spent on that. It was, it was very scary. So anybody want to look at that at 1976? But the Dell Big Trees next. Uh, we've also wrote America's Frontline Doctors. Yes, that's right. That was pretty recent, wasn't it? Yeah, 323,000 page views. Wow, Ooh. nice. Simone Gold, um, Paul Offit, all kinds of stuff. Oh my gosh. Um, but most currently, in the last week, the page has gotten the most views at 11,000 views is Robert Malone. Do you remember who he is? I can't quite remember who he is. Is he the guy who thinks he invented uh, RNA uh, vaccines or something like that? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. He's all over the news yeah. right now. I mean, just like everywhere. <laughs> Somebody goes, oh my God, that guy. <laughs> and when you put up the other one, um, when you put up the other question, you asked a question, if anybody's heard of this person, who was it that you, was it, was it Christian or somebody? Dave Ramsey. Oh yeah, yeah, Dave Ramsey. He's, he held yeah. Christmas parties that are unmasked. No one's allowed to wear a mask near him. Just amazing stuff, amazing stuff. Is that all the quick? Wait, here's some. Oh, somebody knows him. Yep. Portland, Oregon banned for uh, fluoridation. Idaho has been called Mississippi of the mountains, along with the deep south. Wyoming has very low vaccine rates. However, the far oh, northeast man. has a high vaccine rate. What do you think is more? What do you think is relatively unique about the culture and feature people in Maine? That's an awesome question. Ooh. How much time do you have? <laughs> and that's um. what we need. <laughs> It's super diverse. So we have um, a very densely populated first congressional district um, around the city of Portland and Southern Maine. And then the rest of the state is our second congressional district. And they're so different. Um, and the second district is really interesting because it flip flops between red and blue. It's very purple. Purple. <laughs> I live in the second district. Um, and it's politically fascinating, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Our vaccine rate for COVID has been high also. Um, I mean, I think people are mostly sensible, but as you probably know, like anti-vaxxers are just really loud. So I think the campaign that I was on was fantastic and just confident and played to people's strengths of just being logical and caring about our communities and caring about our kids. That was the, the slogan was protect Maine's children. Um, so yeah, that's we kind of ask ourselves that all the time. Yes, though that was a very strange um, when you sh first joined GSOW and you were telling me about vaccine. I uh, mean the campaign. What was it called? Campaign one? Question one. Ours was no on one. Yeah, yeah. It was one. so confusing because it was no on something, but yeah. the no was to keep keep it so it wasn't to keep the new law. It. it was yeah. just. Yeah, I hate it when the media, whenever it's done that way, and it just seems like that's done that way on purpose to confuse the, the voters. Well, in Maine, the law is that if you have a referendum campaign, the wording on the ballot has to be exactly the same as the wording on the petition that people are signing. Mm -hmm. So the petition wording was like, do you want to overturn the new law? So we said, oh. no, it's great. Don't no. overturn the new was, law. That's right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I've seen this in California. But oh, it's very confusing. What were the other six states? I think California is one. California is one. Um, I remember that passing, and man, that was a big deal. Ted, Ted, no, what yes. was his name? Our, our Paul, our, Ted Lou, right? Ted Lou, yeah. He's a pediatrician. Yeah. Yeah, he had heinous things thrown at him on sidewalks. I oh, mean, I, would, yeah. I would not yeah. be surprised. It's still happening. Wouldn't be shocked. Um, so Connecticut, Maine, New York, California, Mississippi, and West Virginia, which is surprising, but I've actually heard that West Virginia might be walking it back. So I'm not positive what their status is right now. Um, but yeah, only six so far. Which is the side, oh, uh, Joel, Joel says, what side appears to be making gains, pro-vax or anti-vax? now i mean before so this was right up until covid started and so all the conversations we were having were about routine vaccines that have been around forever um and then we just launched directly into like this new ridiculousness um it's hard for me to say like i'm so entrenched in the pro side um but also like have had experiences with people that have been close to me who have been drawn in by the anti side um, 
so I really, I'd like to say that it's pro. I think most people approve of and support vaccines, but the anti-vaxxers are so persistent. They're so loud. So loud. And I mean, yeah, absolutely. You're not seeing people going in and marching in and saying, we are going to wear a mask. How dare you not let us, I mean, you're not right. seeing that kind of stuff. And it, it, it's, it's not making the news too. And again, we got to sell newspapers. We got to get clicks on our articles. So we got to make mm -hmm. it as big and as loud and as obnoxious. All we're doing is mm -hmm. we're trying to keep, just go forward. I mean, this, you guys got to remember when we started um, on these vaccine pages was there was no COVID even slightly. We've been doing this for right. 10 years. So <laughs> whenever we first started with the COVID lockdowns, I can remember having the conversation with everybody in the cabal. Hey, you guys, we really should concentrate on these vaccine things because I think it's going to be a big deal. We're yeah. going to get a vaccine in a few years. So I think we really need to get yeah. it happen a lot faster than we thought. That was for sure. But we let's get these things in order because people are going to want to know. And we've been doing it in other languages too. The pages that... Um, that she was talking about the 106 they're not all english there's a lot no. of misinformation in languages outside of english english is in pretty good shape compared to a lot of languages it's really sad so we have a lot of people on our team that are editing in languages other than english 45 percent of the work we do is not in english so that's that's pretty awesome we're almost at 2,000 pages so <laughs> oh i gotta get on that i, I know we're more out, out then. 19 <laughs> 68 or something like that it, it's, oh, it's cool. really getting close right. so I, i'm wondering who's going to hit the 2000th mark all right allison thank you so much for giving us your time today that thank you so much great. everyone it was great yeah i'm great seeing you here and i love your hair i think it looks fantastic <laughs>